Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Prep Recruiting Insider Special Signing Day Edition Show. I'm Ken Berthelot, along with our recruiting guru, Renee Nado. And Renee, what a special day yesterday. It's the day college fans look most forward to outside of the football season and bowl season. You know, and it, no one ever has a bad signing day. Everybody's excited right now. They're ready to play for the BCS Crystal because they had a great signing day. But I'll tell you the truth is, these signing days will lead to BCS title games two, three years down the road. So they're important. And we can't cover everything, but we're going to look, take a look at some of the highlights. And anything just jumped out at you as very special or very surprising yesterday? Well, you know, LSU in-state, LSU did a great job uh, securing the area, the people they wanted to get, Kenny. And they pulled in a few guys to Sean Bauer. Defensive end is a guy that they stole from Auburn. Tulane did as we thought they would. They threw a rope around the metro area and got a lot of people. 18 people from the Louisiana area, 14 for the metro area, and they got quality talent. How many times in the past do you remember People try to come in and steal two-lane commitments in the past. It's been a long time. What about uh, Louisiana Tech getting Carlos Henderson and the two young men from O. Perry Walker? Well, you know, uh, Tulane's loss was a big gain for Arizona State and Louisville. Lynn Clark, an outside linebacker, 6'2", about 215 pounds from O. Perry Walker, is going to go to Louisville, and he's going to be a really good player. He could play inside or outside. Corey Smith, who is the, the nephew of Devin Powell, the two-lane quarterback, They've decommitted from Tulane, and he's going to Arizona State. What a good-looking young man. 6'7", 260, runs a 4'6", 8", 4'7", 40. He's going to be a player for Arizona State. And Carlos Henderson, Kenny, what a big get for wow. Louisiana Tech. Uh, Skip Holtz, what a great job he did getting him. Jabari Jalou, credit him, former Carr High School coach, with getting Carlos Henderson. He is a playmaker out of McDonough 35, a sub 4 4 40, can play slot or running back. I think he'll slot up in the slot with the, with the Tech Bulldogs. Now, we have interviews with a lot of these players, and we'll get to those in just a little while. Let's take a look at a few of the lists. And again, we're not going to cover every name on the list, but some of the names that you feel were big enough, Renee, that's going to make an immediate impact. We'll go to LSU first. And looking at the LSU list, right off the bat, we've got Tredavious White, cornerback from Green Oaks. You know, he's the, he's the cousin of Mo Claiborne, number one draft choice in the Dallas Cowboys, former All-American in the LSU. He is going to be an impact player, not only at quarterback, Kenny, but also as a return specialist, which he did in the Under Armour game. He is a playmaker. Deshaun Bauer, defensive end, Somerville, New Jersey. That's the guy that they you stole from you Auburn. 6'5", 245, will get bigger. He'll fill in with the loss of Sam Montgomery and Kiki Mingo, and you look for him to play early next year. Ethan Postick from Illinois. He's already on campus, 6'6". 285, mean and nasty, likes to finish his blocks. He'll start a tackle, and he may get in the rotation in 2013. Is anybody bigger than, uh, let's see if I can get it right, Fahoko Fanaklo. 6'6", 340, Kenny, I think he's going to start at guard. He's already on campus, is a junior college arrival, and he's big enough, strong enough, to fill that guard role, which is a vital part of that LSU offense. Christian Lukatour from Lincoln, Nebraska. He committed to Texas A&M in Nebraska, finally inked with the Tigers. He's on campus as well. 6'5", 270, can play inside or outside a very versatile defensive lineman. How long have we heard about Kendall Beckwith from West Feliciana? Finally pulled the trigger for the Tigers. <laughs> Alabama or LSU, he'll line up at outside linebacker, rush defensive end, 6'3", 225, outstanding athlete. Frank Heron. He's another big defensive end that I think will get in a rotation. Kenny out of Memphis, Tennessee. He visited Texas and had the Tiger fans holding their breath, but he inked with LSU. John Doris from Neville played quarterback, won't play quarterback at LSU. He can play a lot of places, Kenny. He can play safety or running back, but I think he'll start at wide receiver, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him toy with the idea of playing him at another position just to try. He's a great athlete. Just some of the big names from LSU that really impressed Renee. Let's take a look now at some of the big names from the Tulane Green Wave because the Green Wave uh, signed uh, 24 total, 18, uh, actually 18 to 14 from New Orleans, three from the Baton Rouge area, run from North Louisiana, and they had a really good class. Let's start off with the Curtis Youngman, Richard Allen, Eric Thomas. What a bonanza! At Curtis, they had Richard Allen as a cornerback, but he'll make an impact as a return specialist. 4.0 GPA. Kenny, he's a smart guy. He don't make the same mistake twice. Full four speed. Richard Allen, what a great addition he will be for the Green Wave. Leonard Davis, when we saw him on the first NBC Prep Showcase, uh, you know, Coach said he's an athlete, the best athlete we have at East St. John. Leonard Davis will play. He's played quarterback, but he'll play strong safety. And don't forget, you mentioned Eric Thomas is another guy from John Curtis. Is a middle linebacker. We talked to him as well. And how many people 
do you ever hear about where the coach in high school or any level tells him, tone it down at practice, <laughs> you're hitting too hard. Eric Thomas is one of those guys. 450 bench, almost a 600-pound squat, only 5'10", 225, but a pack of dynamite. Tanzel Smart from Scotlandville. That was a big pickup for Curtis Johnson. 6'2", 290, and he'll fill a big, big role at defensive tackle for Tulane. From Miami, William Townsend, the defensive back. Very talented, six-foot big cornerback, 190 pounds. Miami, a lot of Florida schools liked him a lot, but Tulane got him. Well, I like building a program with transfers when you can. Nick Montana, we've talked about him before. What a quarterback. Great bloodlines, Kenny. And the thing is that Nick Montana will get the first start next year. Chris Davenport, the LSU transfer, coming in as a graduate student. And he'll play defensive tackle. He played on offense briefly for LSU last year. Big, big guy, our number one prospect for LSU years ago out of Mansfield. Let's take a look at the Southeastern lines. What a class Ron Roberts got up there, including a young man from Carr, Titus Charles. Big, strong guy, six feet, 300 pounds. Bench press is about 350 or more, but he is gonna be a big plugger out of, out of Edna Carr. Taylor Cochran from St. Charles Catholic. We had him on the air earlier. What great size, 6'3", 325 pounds plus, but he moves big for a, a great for a big man, and he'll also fill a big role for Ron Roberts. DJ Williams from Garden City, 6'5", 320. <laughs> That's a size, says a lot. 6'5", 320, he's a junior college addition, and Kenny, he's gonna step right in and get some reps. AJ Bowen and Darius Guy. Two it, people from Kapoya Lincoln. It, both guys, and I tell you, that's big gets. Uh, Bowen is a defensive tackle, and Darius Guy is a running back. Kapoya Lincoln, they'll fill some needs at Southeastern. And again, Bowen is the third defensive tackle we've talked about, so he's really addressing Ron Roberts at Southeastern at defensive line. And you love this Keelan uh, McElrath from uh, a junior college, Cochoma. Co Cohoma. Junior college, big defensive lineman. Another defensive lineman. He can play defensive end. Kenny, great size, 6'5". And again, another addition to that defensive line where you win in the pits. Three players we've got to talk about as transfers real quick. Brian Bennett, the quarterback transfer from Oregon. He was a, a, a played a lot of time there. was a starter at one time. He was, and he's going to bring a lot. He's got two years to play at Southeastern. Good size, 6'3", 210, quarterback, and he'll start at Southeastern. Marcus Hayes, wide receiver, Kapaya Lincoln. He can go vertical, and he can do it quickly. He's got some speed, Kenny, and you need somebody to throw a scare into the defense, and he can do that. And then the uh, the, the trio for the offensive is the side of the ball, and that's the running back, Cody Sutton, a transfer from Wyoming. you got a guy who played on a, on a Division One school, a highly touted guy coming out of high school, and he'll fill that running back position. Nickel State and Charlie Stubbs signed six. 16, one transfer, including a couple of local guys, Cody Morales from Hanville. Cody Morales, 6'2", 240. He can play H-back, fullback, or tight end, but he's a guy that's going to really upgrade that position. And from St. James, out in Vashery, Seth Keller. Seth Keller's a guy, a local guy, is going to also add. He's a lot of skill, a lot of talent, and he'll bring a, a, an upgrade to, to uh, Nickel State. Well, the good thing is you've seen the list of people we think is going to make an immediate impact or have an immediate impact on their schools. Renee Nato and uh, all of our partners at SportsNola.com, Ken Trahan, Jude Young, bunch of people went out and talked to a lot of the kids at signing day. We're going to visit with a whole bunch of those in just a moment when we come back on this special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Welcome back to this special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Ken Berthelot, our recruiting guru, Renee Nado. And Renee, we're going to start this segment with some of the players who signed with the LSU Tigers. You and uh, some of our, our partners at SportsNola.com visited with those players. But I know you were very excited to see Kevin Spears, Ricky Jefferson, and Duke Riley, three of those players. It just really kind of got you going. Yeah, you know, we talked to all these guys. And Kevin Spears, what a good-looking prospect he is, sixth. 3195. We've had him on the show before. Good looking prospect. What an, uh, he's a hot commodity right now. A lot of schools wanted him. Syracuse, Louisiana Tech had a, made a play for him, but LSU got him. Duke Riley is a linebacker out of LSU. Just pulled a trigger a week ago, and he's going to be a really outstanding outside linebacker. Strong safety monster back for LSU. And, and Ricky Jefferson, wow, cornerback out of Destrehan, highly touted. I think he'll live up to his billing. Well, Renee Nado, along with Ken Trahan from SportsNola.com, and of course, Coach Rick Gailey, uh, visited a lot of these people with our cameraman Andrew Alvarez, Adam Bandera, and Daryl Ashley, and uh, they visited with a lot of the kids who signed with LSU. Let's take a listen. 
Kevin, congratulations. Uh, it's been a fun ride for you. We had you on a show a few weeks ago. Uh, kind of tell us how it unfolded. When did LSU really come into the picture with you? Um, it was like like the last car, like the last game when we played car. Um, that's when they started to take a lot of interest in me and um, started to talk to them more. And you had a visit up there. Talk a little bit about the visit you had at LSU. How impressive was it and, and how did they treat you? Well, you know, I was amazed. That was my first time actually being on, you know, LSU campus, seeing the, the stadium, Death Valley and everything. I was I was excited. Um, and another thing, you know, it's close to home. So, you know, my parents and everything, everybody could come see me play. You know, we'll get the opportunity, you know, to watch me play, hopefully. So I just got to do the work, put in, put in the put in the hard work and everything will come well. Well, you're a hot commodity. You know, everybody got on you real quick, Louisiana Tech and a lot of schools. Talk about some of the schools that really put the heat on you the last couple of weeks. Um, I actually, my recent offer was from uh, Syracuse. You know, they said they want, you know, try to get me up on a visit, actually Minnesota as well. But uh, I told them, you know, I wasn't too, you know, too sure because it, was, it started to get late in the recruiting and everything. And I, I kind of was, after I made that commitment to LSU, I kind of felt, you know, comfortable about that. So I didn't really want to take any more visits. So I told them, you know, that's probably going to be it for me. No more visits. You know, LSU would be the school I go to. The thing about you, Kevin, is, is you, you're a hard worker. Uh, you got great skills, catch the ball with your hands, a 4-5 kind of guy, 6-3. Your basketball skills translate well into football as a wide receiver, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, I use the, you know, the box, like boxing out in basketball, just like, you know, shielding a defensive back to try to catch the ball over him. So, you know, jumping helps me, you know, get higher than cornerbacks and everything. So I just try to translate that to the football field as, as best as possible. Congratulations, Ricky. Won't you tell us who your recruiting coach was at LSU and what they've told you about where you're going to be start, what position you're going to be starting at there? Uh, my co recruiting coordinator is uh, Coach Frank Wilson, and uh, he's the running back coach there. And uh, me and him really uh, developed a bond and a relationship over the last past four years. And uh, he really just been looking forward to me playing uh, cornerback, preferably uh, in a nickel back situation, uh, outside corner, and also uh, safety. They just look to uh, move me around a lot, see where I best fit in at, and get me in there early. So uh, I'm looking forward to working hard to be in that position and uh, do what I have to do as a football player and help my team out. People on the outside really don't understand what a close bond you form with your recruiting coach. You're going, you will with, the, with your position coach as you go forward, but that recruiting coach, you form a special bond with him that will last a lifetime. Yeah, yeah man, it's just a real good feeling you know he always makes it feel like home for me it's like a older brother slash dad type always trying to give me advice and uh always helping me giving me advice to uh, try to get better and uh develop as a man also and uh, as a football player and it's not just about uh, football to him it's about uh, me handling myself responsibly outside of school inside of school just doing the right things that i have to do and uh he's just the guy that's gonna hopefully make my dreams all my dreams come true well, you know what hard work is about coming back from, a, from an ACL injury to have an outstanding senior year. Tell us what Destrehan High School has meant to you in preparing you both athletically and scholastically for the college life. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Destrehan High School is just a real good place, man. They have real nice people. I don't think there's a mean person on that campus, and they just always look to help help out uh, anybody that's willing to help themselves, you know. So they never give up on anybody, and they never gave up on me, and I appreciate them for that. And uh, my coaches, all of them help me. I mean, they're the reason I'm this big, this fast, and they just really uh, invested in me as a player, and uh, I really appreciate them for that. And uh, I always just got good vibes. Never, always try to push me. Always try to get me to that next level, even if I was ahead or anything. Just try to push me and help me be a better person and also a better football player. So I just really appreciate them for that. Duke, congratulations. I get, it all came to a culmination last Wednesday after our TV show. What sold you on the Tigers and, and what made the final decision for you? Well, um, Coach Frank always told me, Coach Frank Wilson, he always told me that he was going to fight for me to get a full ride off, of, knowing I had a great shirt. You know, um, I kind of was. Uh, leaning more towards TCU or Tulane because that was the only schools that I liked the most out of the top three LSU, Tulane, and TCU, and they were had the, they all had the full offer. And then um, I had a in-home visit with Coach Frank Wilson and Coach Chavis um, Thursday night, and um, Coach Les called me and told me I had a full ride. And you know, I just uh, it, words couldn't explain the <laughs> the feeling, you know, and I just it was just awesome and. It was where I always wanted to be, where I saw myself playing since I was growing up, where I watched great players come from, and I always saw myself being one of those great players. So, I mean, that's why. Well, Duke, where does uh, Coach Davis and, uh, and Frank, where did they talk to you about playing? Outside, uh, you know, even like a monster back, strong safety? Where, where, where are you playing? I'm um, outside linebacker. 
I mean, it, it, there's sometimes they linebackers walk out anyway, so I mean, it's a great fit for me. What, what do you feel like the areas you have to improve on before you arrive in Baton Rouge? Um, just, um, just getting my weight up more and um, main, keep maintaining my speed and just uh, running through more of my tackles. Kind of tough to tell TCU Tulane and some of these other schools no? Yeah, it was, it was really tough, you know, but I, I really appreciate those guys from TCU and Tulane, the coaches the, and the people around there, the staff, everybody that recruited me and wanted me to be a part of their, their school. It was, a, it was a blessing, you know. We'll be back with a look at some of the young men who signed with the Tulane Green Wave right after this on this special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Welcome back to this special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Ken Berthelot along with our recruiting guru, Renee Nado. And uh, in this segment, we're taking a look at some of the young men who signed with the Tulane Green Wave who will make an immediate impact. And tell you what, they signed 24 pretty good young men. 14 from the metro area, three from Baton Rouge, one from the North Shore. So you got 18 guys out of here, Kenny, and, uh, you know, from the state. They've done a great job of throwing a rope around here and not only getting a quantity, but quality as well. Well, I know you were excited about Sergio Medina. All year you've been talking about Kenneth Santa Marina and, of course, from John Curtis, there's Sherman Beatty, the running back. Sherman Beatty, ever since he ran a 4-3-8-40 at the LSU camp, he's opened eyes. 5'10", 200 pounds, can run inside or outside, good hands. And he didn't play a lot at Turtles because they have such a big backfield, so many players, so he's not nicked up a lot. And Brandon Godfrey is a guy, he'll get on the field. He may start at center next year for the Green Wave out of Curtis. Well, again, Renee, along with Kenny Trahan and Coach Rick Galley, visited with a lot of these young men. Let's hear what they have to say. McDonough, 35, with a big addition to the Tulane Green Wave, Kenneth Santa Marina. And Kenneth, uh, big decision for you. Why the Green Wave? What, what, when, when did the light go on for you? Um, kind of last year around December when I started looking into all the colleges that was looking at me. I kind of bumped a lot of colleges out, and I picked this one specifically. You know, we talked on the, on the TV show a few months ago, and, you know, a lot of schools were after you, and you had to feel good about Curtis Johnson, the job he's doing, a lot of local talent. Uh, it's got to make you feel good that you're one of the many guys from New Orleans area that's helping improve Tulane. Well, it is great because he also coached at the next level, and he knows a lot about what they're running and all that, and he also runs it at that college. So he gets you ready to go to the next level and have a better chance of going to NFL. What are a couple of schools that you considered strongly before deciding on the Green Wave? Well, I considered a few colleges, like mostly in the SEC, because it's big up there and I usually had a challenge. But then Tulane came along and just took me away. What was it about Tulane that really impressed you? Pretty much the academic center, because they had one of the, one of the best in the country, mostly in the nation, as college-wise. A lot of students go there, go there and get their education, and the best thing. Tell us who your recruiting coach is, uh, was at Tulane University, how close you got to him, and what they have looking forward uh, to you as far as position is concerned. Um, my recruiter was uh, Mike New, the quarterback coach at Tulane, and then uh, he kind of switched it over to Barry Lamb, the linebacker coach at Tulane. So me and Coach Lamb had got a, a really good connection. Um, he came visit at my house, and ever since then I'd call him up and everything, and, and he's a real good guy. And so. Uh, We've been close the whole time, ever since I went on my visit and everything. And uh, they project me to play at uh, at Sam Will linebacker, one of the outside linebackers. So, uh, and they said maybe I might have a chance to play a running back, maybe my sophomore or junior year, I'm just because they're fully loaded and talented at the running back position. But I'm really excited just to get the chance of playing and and just a chance of starting as a freshman too at linebacker. So I'm ready to put in all the work. Sherman, uh, you got to feel good. You got a lot of teammates going with you to, to head over to Curtis Johnson. Is uh, got to feel good about your teammates with you. Right. I mean, it feels good, you know, knowing that we're all comfortable and we all played high school together, so we're all going to be familiar, you know, running the same plays and just being a team together. You had a tough decision. We had you on the show a couple of times, and you had a tough decision where you wanted to go. What were your final two or three choices? Um, it was really just out of where I felt at home and where I felt most comfortable and where I felt that I would play the most, and I felt like Tulane was the place for me to be. Where else did you consider? Um, I was considering ULL, Minnesota, and Memphis. 
And a good thing about you playing in, in the Curtis backfield with so many other running backs, you're pretty fresh. I mean, you're not too beat up or anything. So going up there, you got to feel good that your opportunity to play early is, is is there. Right. That's what I feel most positive about because we had other backs that could step up and play when we were, when we were hurt or tired. And I feel like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have 100% like more energy. I'm gonna be more healthier than other players. So I think that's a big confidence in world to me. Tell us uh, in the recruiting process with Tulane University, you made your decision very early. Well, there was no doubt in my mind from the very from the get-go that these coaches are going to get me where I want to be. And the school, I couldn't ask for a better education. I can't go anywhere else to get a better education. And it being home, it's just icing on the cake, and um, I couldn't ask for anything more. And it's, it appears to be a very good time to be there right now with the style of offense uh, that they run. And not only that, but the ability to teach what they do offensively, I think, is outstanding. Right, with the, the coaches and the, and the NFL experience that they have is is big and then from the playbook standpoint I'm very excited about that I understand those kind of concepts the same type of thing we ran at Jesuit same type of offense I'm I've been comfortable with since I've played quarterback so just a new language that you have to learn in describing things but the mechanics of the same and Richard a great career man you've done so much both as a cornerback as a return specialist you got to feel good about your uh, opportunity to play early next year Oh yeah, uh, the coach told me that I'm most likely going to be starting as a freshman. That really made me commit to their school, so when he told me that, I'm like, yeah, that's what I need to be. So I'm going to start as a freshman, and I'm going to play corner and do punt returns and kick returns. I'm going to have a great season, have a fun time out there, hopefully get some wins and get to a bowl game and get a bowl game for my first year. So. How do you feel with so many of your teammates going with you? Yeah, that feels great. I mean, the whole team, we are family, and I'm glad that some of them are coming with me to Tulane because it's really heartbreaking to know that that I'm not playing with none of these people anymore, but at least I get to play with three of them, so that's great. Ken Trahan with Eldrick Washington of Helen Cox. Eldrick, congratulations. Staying in town, going to Tulane University. Yeah, I feel good about my decision and staying home, so it's going to be good to play for Tulane. And first and foremost, you get family and friends that have an opportunity to continue to see you play in your hometown. Right, they ain't got to pay too much money to travel and all that, just come right there to the dome, so it's going to be nice. Defensive end. I mean, clearly you feel comfortable with where they want to play you. Right. Yeah. Defensive end. That's my best position. So I feel comfortable playing right there. You look at the technique you played here at Helen Cox as compared to what they want to do with you at Tulane. Scheme-wise, is it similar? Yeah, it's, it's pretty similar. 4-3. Mm -hmm. And multiple defense. So I'm just ready to go in and work as hard as I can to get some playing time. Well, you played in 4A and you played in as good a league as you'll find in the state this past year with all the quality teams and players and I've got to believe that's prepared you well right it did it was a lot of competition during my four years of high school but like I learned what I needed to learn to get me to the next level you know you're a unique kind of lineman you can play anywhere along the line you play tackle you can play guard may line up at center where you feel like your strength is I think my strength really is at center like in Tulane's offense is at center I mean Curtis offense every position is really the same but I mean I think my strength really is at center because I like I'm, I'm quick enough to get out and get to the second level of linebacker instead of just, you know, and I'm good at picking up blitzes and all instead of a defensive end. I mean, I'd rather pick up blitzes. You know what's good is Andrew Nearman, a uh, former Curtis player, and Mike Henry's there now. You're the third in that legacy of John Curtis Patriot lineman going to Tulane as a center, and that's got to make you feel good. Yes, sir. It definitely makes you feel good because Andrew had a great career. He started all four years. Mike Henry started last okay, year. Most, most likely going to start. Most likely to go start this year. So I mean, it's been a, a great Curtis tradition there at center, and I just hope hope to keep it up. Now you had a little pressure on your brother. Went played at Tulane. Did you consider any other schools before pulling the trigger on the Greenway? Um, Memphis had offered me. Uh, ULL actually came in late and offered me. McNeese State offered me. And I really, I gave every school a fair shot, but at the end of the day, I really knew where my loyalty was and where my heart was. When we come back, we'll visit with some of the young men who signed with other colleges around the nation and around the state right after this on the special edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider Show for Signing Day. Welcome back to this special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Ken Berthelot along with the recruiting guru for Channel 20, Renee Nado. And Renee, boy, I'll tell you what, there was some young men who got away to some other schools around the state and around the nation. All year we've been talking about Noel Ellis and Damian Williams and uh, Seathan Carter, and boy, they didn't disappoint, did they? You know, and, and it's impossible for the local schools, the LSU, Tulane, Louisiana Techs, 
you allow us to keep all our talent in state. And state schools always come into the Pelican State and steal a few. And boy, did they get some good ones this year. Corey Smith out of O'Pera Walker and Lynn Clark decommitted from Tulane. But you know, Stephen Carter, as you mentioned, boy, what a big get he get from Nebraska. Now LSU put a big push on to save him, but they couldn't do it. Damian Williams, who ran uh, who ran that offense for the state champion Bromo Raiders, will play at Mississippi State. And Noel Ellis, cornerback from Carr, what an outstanding he get he is for the Aggies. He'll play with Johnny Manziel and that group at Texas A&M next year. Wow, what a good player he is. Again, Renee, Kenny, and Coach Rick, uh, they all went and visited with everybody. Let's hear what those young men have to say. Ken Trahan with Archbishop Rummel quarterback Damian Williams, who's becoming a bulldog in Mississippi State. Congratulations, first and foremost, Damian, and talk about what compelled you to choose Mississippi State. Um, it, they have state-of-the-art uh, facilities, and um, it, it's a great opportunity to do what I always wanted to do. My dream to play in the SEC, and, and uh, this is my chance, and I'm not going to pass it up. Uh, you're a young man. You, you go about your business the right way. You don't brag. You don't scream. You're not a big talker. You lead by example, and it had to be frustrating to have to wait so long for the kind of offers you were looking for. Um, I'm, a, I'm a blessed individual, and uh, I knew that, that the Lord was going to bless me to um, – Play big time football, and I just waited on my moment, and, and here it is. Southern Miss, of course, you initially verbally committed to them, and, and I know you really like uh, the situation there. And Coach Monken, uh, how tough was it to to tell them that you weren't coming and that you'd switched off? It was very tough, and I have so much respect for Southern Miss University and Coach Monken, and um, it would have been a great fit for me. But um, I, I think that Mississippi State was a better was a better uh, choice for me. As far as State is concerned, they have a returning starter, obviously, that's a senior. They had another quarterback uh, that was there that played sparingly last year, and they've recruited another in this class. So clearly there's competition, something you're not afraid of. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just going to try to learn as much as possible from Tyler Russell and um, can compete at the highest level, you know, work hard, and do the things that, that I've been doing. When you look back at how this process unfolded, you had a couple of opportunities maybe early in the spring and summer, and you kind of passed on that to see what developed, and then they kind of backed off a little bit. I guess it was more of a proving thing for you. You wanted to prove to people that you were legitimate. Uh, I, I wasn't. I was going to wait, you know, to make my choice, and I wasn't ready when when all those other schools were ready to make my choice. So um, I, I was blessed at the end of the, at the end of the recruiting process, and here I am now, a bulldog. We're here with Noel Ellis, outstanding player from Edna Carr, signed with Texas A&M. And I'm very familiar with uh, Texas A&M now, Noel, and know one thing about them, they have more traditions uh, than any other school in the country. How familiar are you, because you committed pretty early to Texas A&M, how familiar you are, are you with the many traditions at Texas A&M? I'm familiar with a lot. It's a tremendous fan base. I love the fans there. The football program is outstanding, it's up and coming, and I believed in the program from the start, and that's why I committed early in the summer, June 14th. And, and you stayed with it, because I'm sure there were a lot of schools that were uh, looking to try to dissuade you from, from going to A&M, but uh, you, you obviously had done a thorough study of it to begin with so that you stayed solid in your initial choice. Yeah, I just believed in the uh, program, and I believed that Coach Sumlin knew what he was going to do. I knew it was going to be up and coming. I knew we were going to be special. A couple of national championships on the way, and I plan to contribute to that team next year. Did it make a difference that now Texas A&M is in the Southeastern Conference as opposed to the Big 12 where they were before? Yeah, it played a big factor because I, I, want, I always wanted to play in the SEC. It's a, the best conference to play in. All the uh, players go to the NFL from now, the most players. And it's just the most competitive conference. You play good opponents week in and week out, and I want to be a part of that. Corey Smith of O'Perry Walker. Corey, you've chosen? Arizona State. And obviously you came to this decision this week, so it was pretty difficult. Tell us about your choice and why you made it. Well, it was pretty difficult because it was a hard battle It was because I got to live it for the next four years of my life. So it was hard to sign between Kentucky, Louisville, and Arizona State. But at the end of the day, I choose Arizona State, Sun Devils. Yeah, there you go. A lot of people have talked about whether you would play stand-up linebacker at your height or play defensive end. It looks like you'll be a defensive end, correct? Yeah, correct. And talk about what you bring to the table, why you think you'll be successful playing that position at Arizona State. Well, I think I'll be successful because I got good size and good ability to pass for us, run stop. I think I'm an all-around player. And clearly the process was tough for you. You had a couple of other choices, and you had to tell a couple of people no. Talk about that. Yeah. 
Well, it was hard telling people no because it was all good schools. But at the end of the day, I had to come out of one school. Back in Buccaneer land with another West Jeff Buccaneer, Ronald Lewis heading up to Arizona State, a guy who everybody wanted, and Ronald's got to be great. Uh, when did you finally make your decision? Well, it was during the summer when I was coming from our trip from Florida. Well, of course, Scott had something sit me down on the table. He was like, here, you got to make sure you, you got to make a decision now so you can be safe along the way. So if something happens, you'll be good and you'll have a backup. So I would, I look back to it and I was like, man, Arizona State, they reach out more to me. They're like a family. They keep contacting me. They keep wanting me, giving me reason to go there. So that would make, me, make my decision. Now, Corey Smith, right up the road to O'Perry Walker, he's going to be a, a Sun Devil as well. Did you help him at a decision? And, and uh, how did you plan to his role committing to the Sun Devils? Yeah, when, when I was on the trip with him, when we went on our visit together, at a party, I was asking him how you like it. He was telling me he loved it good. And I was like, you might as well come up here with me and, and support Louisiana in another state and bring our talent to some something else to show out. Congratulations, first and foremost. I know this was a process that was pretty interesting. You had some interest originally, a lot of interest laid, and you had a tough decision to make, but Nebraska looked good, didn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about Nebraska, why you liked it, what you liked about it, what compelled you to sign there? Well, first, I love the academic part, you know, and not only just the academics, the sports. I love the way that they were using me as a tight end, and I have a chance to exceed in my goals that I want to reach. Weight room's pretty good there, huh? It's legendary. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about uh, when you looked at uh, Coach Polini and his staff, uh, what, what you liked about them and what they told you about what you could do and how soon you could play. I mean, I have a big chance at playing as a freshman, you uh, know. They, they, um, they push us to work hard, you know. That's something similar to what Coach Rod does. So. And then in terms of colors, I guess that's pretty cool. You, you're staying about the same color red, I would imagine, becoming a Cornhusker. Yes, sir. Uh, Seaton, talk about your skill set. You played H-back, you played fullback, played tight end, uh, a little bit of everything. And, and you became more of an item when you showed people how well you can catch the ball and run with the ball as a senior. Talk about where you feel like you excel the most. I think in my ability to block and catch the ball, you know, not not too many people can block as good and catch and you know work with the ball in the, in the hands. So finishing blocks. I mean, you watch the video and you know I've done your games for three years and I've always raved about how you finish blocks all the time. It's something you're taught, but it's something you have to take pride in and you always finish your blocks. Mm, it just comes natural, you know. It's just once I got them, you know, I don't want to let them go. Just finish it off, finish the play for my team. Brandon Porter heading to San Diego State, and uh, you got to be excited, man. What saw you on, on the Aztecs? Uh, they uh, saw my friend Richard highlight tape, and then uh, somehow they saw mine, and then they called me and said they offered me and they liked me, so that's how they got started. You know, it's funny, you're going to San Diego State, you've played so many positions. you play a little running back, defensive back, you know, uh, return kicks, a little bit like a Marshall Folk. Where are they going to line you up in, uh, in Arizona, in uh, San Diego State? Uh, they say they're going to start me off at safety, and depending on how things go, they might play me at running back, but it's just all, we're going to play it by ear. How tough it was it to tell the local schools, no, you were going west? Uh, it was hard, it was hard, but you know, uh, I wanted to get out and have the experience, you know, go out of state and start new. You know, you're leaving this class, and... 25 state championships, a great class of teammates here. What's your fondest memory, Brandon, if you leave John Curtis? Uh, winning, being national champions with all of my best friends. You know, they're not only my teammates, but they're the ones I've been playing with since we were young, and uh, they're like my brothers, and that was the best thing, you know, winning, you know, coming out number one. Lynn Clark, he had an interesting process. He committed early to Tulane, a very good program. Curtis Johnson's done a great job there, and, and I know you really liked it there. What, what prodded you to change your mind? Um, I, I felt like... It was I was in a great situation at Tulane, but it wasn't going to work out. We disagreed on some things, but we're going to move forward. And I th just thank them for the opportunity. You talk about disagreeing about position, maybe is that is that the big thing? Yeah, position has something to do with it. You know, a lot of things went into it. So, where do you expect that you will play at Louisville? Um, they said my freshman year I'd be playing Sam linebacker, but my moving my sophomore year I'm going to play inside. And you feel very comfortable there. You like your ability to move left and right, and you like your ability as a striker, too. Yeah, I love that. You know, you got to be a striker as a linebacker, and you got to play with speed and enthusiasm. Louisville, I mean, obviously, you got a first hand look at them. They were in New Orleans yeah. playing in the All State Sugar Bowl. Not only did they play, but they whipped Florida. So I'm sure that got your attention, and Charlie Strong's done a great job. Um, the thing that got my attention about Louisville is Charlie Strong. He coached Brandon Spikes. He coached Cunningham that plays for the um, Patriots. 
coach Reggie Nelson, he coached a lot of NFL players, so why not? It's a great opportunity to be coached by an NFL coach. Carlos, I know it was a tough decision for you. You were headed elsewhere. What what brought you uh, to go to Tech? What made it the final decision for you? Uh, just the um, whole surrounding, you know, the love they show at La Tech. I really like that. You know, they got a stable degree um, program, you know. I like their football um, program, you know. They, it's a plus, so everything's going up. So, you know, I, f I found that it was the best fit for me to um, attend La Tech this fall. How tough was it to say no to your brother and the Utah Utes? Uh, it was it was it was kind of hard, you know. But you know, I had to be a man, you know, and tell him how I really felt about the college, you know. So I did that, and things was things was better, you know. The interest really intensified the last couple of weeks. What are some of the schools that really put the heat on you the last week or two? Uh, I would have to say ULL, La Tech, and, and also Utah. Okay, and uh, your skill set, I think you'd be a great running back, wide receiver, cornerback. Where do you think they're going to line you up? Uh, slot receiver. I'm going to be on the slot receiver most of the time. Kick returns, perhaps? Yes, sir. Okay, you think you might get your hand on the ball a few times, a little end sweeps? Yes, sir. I'm going to get, yeah, all type, yeah. So they go, they go give me the ball. Yes, sir. Now you've had a chance to talk. How much did uh, did Coach DeLuke play uh, in, in in the recruiting process? Uh, you know, he's a coach from New Orleans. You know, we had a relationship from the um, start, so you know, we could we continue to build. You know, and that's what um, that's played a part in the decision I made too. Well, Carlos, congratulations. Looking forward to some great days ahead in Louisiana Tech. Yes, sir. Patrick Klebert, Archbishop Rummel, and Richmond. So you stay with the R family there. It sounds pretty good, man. Right? Yeah, I did. Uh, I already got the whole wardrobe ready. It's all red and blue. <laughs> Patrick, you considered a couple of Ivy League schools. Uh, you were looking for academics. It was very important to you. So clearly that was a big part of your decision, and that's what's most serious in the decision that you made, I would imagine. Well, uh, that definitely played a big part of it. Uh, you know, Richmond has a very prestigious uh, academic side to it, but also it does have the uh, have a very solid football program. They won the national championship uh, in 2008, so that, that also played a big part. One of the things you were thinking about, you were thinking actually about not playing uh, football at the next level because of your academic prowess and what you were going to pursue. What ultimately tipped the scales and convinced you to continue playing? Winning state championship. Uh, I wanted to experience that again, and uh, or just that you know, really cemented my desire to keep playing. People look at you and they say, well, this guy, he's one of those guys that seems to have his future in front of him. With the size that he has, he gets better every year. Uh, I would imagine you feel like you're nowhere near as good as you can be yet? Definitely not. Definitely have a long way to go, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And from the standpoint of what, you, what your strengths are, uh, from a standpoint of, of your playing ability, what do you feel like you do best at this stage? Well, coming from Rummel, uh, just run blocking. That's it's it's what I enjoy doing. But uh, I'm, I consider myself pretty good at pass protecting too. Welcome back to this special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. Ken Berthelot and the old guru of recruiting himself. Renee Nado and Renee, we haven't talked about some of the other schools who have really made a presence and had a presence in the city of New Orleans. It's that's UL Monroe, uh, UL Lafayette, and Southern Miss starting to come back and recruit New Orleans very hard. And Drape O'Reilly, a West Jeff tight end H back, is going to go to Southern Miss and make an impact there. He's a big guy, about 6'4, 250 or so, and he's a great player. A lot of people wanted him. UL Monroe, you mentioned Tevin Horton, wow. the Curtis running back, Kenny. We've seen him before, and he's going to go up to UL Monroe, and I think he'll get in a rotation. And Roland Jenkins is a, is a cornerback out of McDonough 35. Good looking on the hoof, got good speed, and I think he'll add to the, the mix at UL Monroe and UL uh, Lafayette. What a bony oh, they had. Wow, and UL Lafayette too, huh? Wow. Oh, wow, and Devin Scott is, is outstanding speed. Uh, Quantes Armand is a wide receiver, big 6'4", 195 pounds, and DeAquin Withrow, we've had him on the TV show, 6'6", yeah. 270, wow, does he look great. He'll play tackle, he'll add about 30, 35 pounds, and he'll be a great prospect. Well, again, let's take a look and see what many of these young men had to say about their schools on signing day. Draper Riley heading up to Southern Mississippi. And uh, what turned a trick for you with Southern Mississippi with the Golden Eagles? Uh, Southern Mississippi, you know, even though it was in Mississippi, when I got up there, just, uh, it really just felt like home. I like the coaching staff and all that. You know, it just made me feel like that's where I'm supposed to be at. Draper, we've talked on TV before. What other schools did you consider before you became a Golden Eagle? 
Well, I, I had plenty of offers in the summer, about five or six, but, you know, when it came down to the coaching staff who was giving me the most attention and where I felt most comfortable, I, I just chose Southern Miss, and that was way in the summer. So, you know, school was kind of backed off to other players and all. So it was just Southern Miss the whole year round, even after the uh, coaching staff lost. You're a unique athlete. You run about a 4840, maybe a little better than that. Have played H-back, tight end, fullback, and even some defensive end. Uh, where might they use you in Hattiesburg? Hattiesburg, they run the spread offense just like us. You know, I talked to the coach. They uh, talk about using something like an H-back, not no fullback, an H-back, spread out a little bit, tight end, full H-back and tight end. In need be, could you play DN if you had to? Well, I could play anything if I had to. <laughs> Linebacker, whatever they need me at. How was uh, the draw of Todd Munkin his first year there? How was that uh, in your recruiting? Oh, well, uh, you know, of course, Munkin, when I went up there on my uh, recruiting visit, he let us watch a uh, nice little film while we did at Oklahoma State. And, you know, he just, you know, even though it's going to be his first year coaching staff, I know I have faith in him. And he, he looked like uh, he's going to be a great head coach. Uh, what made the decision for you? Uh, when did the light go on that you wanted to play up in Monroe? Um, my visit. When I went up there and visited, I, I seen a lot of things that I liked it, like the team and the chemistry. It's like a brotherhood, something I want to be a part of. Now, Roland, you're a safety, but you play in the box, man. You like to tackle. Uh, you like to get a little physical. How does that defense fit your skills? Uh, it fits me well because it's just something I've been born doing, you know, tackling people. I'm just an aggressive player, and it just gives me a chance to do what I do. What areas do you feel like you want to improve on a little bit before you get up there with the Warhawks? Um, maybe I can get some better feet workers, you know. Tackling, size, a few things I could work on. Playing for Coach Reese, how did they kind of school you and uh, and prepare you to move to the next level? <laughs> coach Reese prepared us for a lot. He's a tough coach, you know. So it's not nothing we ain't going to see new in college. Getting up to UL Monroe, running back. I tell you, Tevin, uh, they're getting a great player. What other schools did you consider before pulling the trigger on the Warriors? Well, just sitting here with the, um, with the with all the schools that I had, like Southern University, I had a lot of schools looking at me like Mississippi State, somewhere like Houston, Arkansas, and just coming down to ULM was just like my only offer, and I just I just thank God every day that I have it, you know, because that's where he wanted me to be at, and so having two offers coming out of the, coming out of my junior year is like, man, I'm gonna just break it down with ULM because I feel real real safe up there, it's real family oriented and everything, so. Just being up there around those guys has really made me feel at home. You are a, a downhill kind of runner with surprise to speed. You're about a 4 or 5 guy. What do you feel like are your assets as a running back? Well, using my vision and having a lot of balance. Having a lot of balance is really a thing because a lot of guys go for your knees and go for your thighs and stuff, but you just got to be able to bounce off of those hits and be able to absorb, absorb any tackles that are on you. So you just got to make a move or either have to run somebody over. But... Just, just using a lot of my uh, assets like speed, I can break away from people if I have to, and also I have a lot of vision, so that's the things that are my key components right there. And you can't play an offense like this without using your blocking skills and your receiving skills, so you're pretty well-rounded as you arrive on campus. Oh yeah, yes sir, yes sir. They talked to me about that when I went on my official up there, and uh, just being able to catch the ball, because they, they, they threw the ball a lot up there, so just being in a spread offense is really kind of like the fear, but it's just, you know, it's out of shotgun, so I'm going to be able to really, you know, tag along with those guys when I do that. We're here with three Buccaneers making the next step up on signing day here, and Diakwin Withrow, Devin Scott, and Quantis Armand uh, making the next step. First of all, uh, all ULL guys moving up. Uh, how tough was it to make the decision uh, to be a Cajun? Honestly, it wasn't that hard because I first moment I met the, the ULL coaching staff, I kind of fell in love. So it wasn't it wasn't really a hard pick for me to decide. Now, Diak, when you're going to be a, a tackle, uh, what do you what is your skill set? What do you feel like is your strength? Uh, I'm very good with my feet, you know, and very athletic. But I got to hit the weight room hard to get stronger. Now, basketball has helped you a lot, hasn't it? Yes, sir. Now, Devin. Wide receiver, you had a chance to become a Cornhusker, but you stayed true to your word. Uh, that says a lot about you. How tough was that? Um, it wasn't that tough because ULL showed me a lot of love. They was here from the summer since I first, when they first saw me, they knew I was going to be something for them. So it was very easy because they showed me love and I felt at home. So. Now, Devin, you had a, with your track background, you had an opportunity to go to LSU and also run track. Is track going to play into this? Will you run track for the Cajuns? Yeah, I don't run track for the kids, but I want to put football first, so I run track. Uh, so as a return specialist, what is your skill set going up to ULL? What do you feel like is your strength up there? Man, my strength is the, um, I guess the main people missing have the speed. 
Yeah, I just got to go back to the weight room and get back strong, so I'll be good. Now, Quantes, uh wide receiver, you you're going to head up to ULL, too. It's got to help that you got a couple of teammates going with you. Yes, it feels wonderful to go to ULL with these guys. What are the other options did you have before you pulled the trigger on the Cajuns? Well, Tulane and ULM. Now, what do you feel like is your strength as a receiver? Obviously, a lot of size. My size. I, I could create a lot of mismatches with my 6'5 frame. Final comments coming up on the special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider right after this. Well, welcome back to the special signing day edition of the Prep Recruiting Insider. And Renee, you said something earlier that the schools like uh, UL Monroe, UL Lafayette, Southern Miss, they now have a recruiting presence in the city of New Orleans. Back when you played college football uh, and you were recruited, you could have been one of 50 or 60 kids signed to a big BCS school like an LSU or an Alabama. And uh, some of these kids going to the smaller schools, so to speak, uh, would have never seen the field if they would not have changed the rules more than a quarter of a century ago. You know, if they didn't sign 10,000 players, I wouldn't even <laughs> see the field. But the thing is that now you got to be better to sign a scholarship because yeah. they're very selective. When you only sign 25, 23, 27 players, they, they handpick these guys, so you just don't pick a whole bunch. And it's very, very tough to be a college athlete and make a team and be recruited now. Nowadays, it's much tougher than years ago. And because it's much tougher, they recruit you much earlier. So in the next week or two, we're going to look at the class of 2014, and hey, maybe we'll even sneak a few 2015s in there because I know you've got the list ready to go, Mr. Guru. <laughs> we, we do have it, Kenny, and we'll give you a peek into the future and see what 2014 looks like and beyond, so you don't want to miss that. Well, we want to wish all of the young men who signed this week the very best of luck in their college career. Good luck to the universities who signed them. I want to thank all of our crews, including uh, Coach Rick Galley, Ken Trahan, uh, Renee Nado, who went out and did the interviews, along with photographers Andrew Alvarez, Adam Bandera, and Daryl Ashley for getting all of the video for this show. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. For Renee Nado and that entire WHNO TV crew, I'm Ken Berthelot. Thanks for being with us. See you next week on the Prep Recruiting Insider.